Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 32 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to teach you everything you could ever want to know about either reading from or writing to files using character streams. And a character stream is just a series of characters. It's nothing that complicated. However, most of this important information is either separated by a comma, space, or tab. Today, we're going to be separating everything using just simple spaces. Now, of course, i got to go and bring in the I.O. library if I'm going to be doing I.O. type stuff here. And then I'm just going to be bouncing back and forth inside of public static void main and then different methods that I need. Now, of course, I'm going to be creating a list of customer information. So I'm going to create a customer class and I'm going to throw a bunch of these customer objects into an array. And then I'm just going to go get customers. And slowly I'm starting to use more object oriented principles in creating all this stuff here. So you guys learn the proper way to program. So what do I need to to do. I have to come down here and define my customer class. So come outside of main. I'm going to create my customer class first. So of course we can create classes inside of other classes. And I'm going to make it private static so that other classes can call for this. And then I'm going to create public string first name and last name. Two fields that are going to be needed in my class. And then I'm going to come up here and also create public int and it's going to be customer age. Then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to create constructor method called customer, just like the class, of course. And it's going to have string first name, string last name, and integer, which is going to be customer age. And then this guy is going to be able to build all of our customer objects. We're going to go to this, which is a reference to the object that is being built, is equal to the first name field that was passed to this constructor to create this customer object. Last name is equal to last name that was passed over. And then this customer age is equal to customer age that was passed. And there you are. I just created myself a little customer generating class here along with a constructor that's going to be able to build everything. So that's good. But I still did not create get customers, which of course we're going to have to create. Let's come down here right after we define this class and let's create that guy. And I'm going to go private static customer. This is what it's going to be returning in a customer array and then get customers and nothing's going to be passed to it. And what is it going to do? It's going to create a new customer object array and I'm going to call it customers is equal to new and I'm going to define inside of here that there's going to be five customers inside of this guy. And then I'm going to go customers bracket zero to fill the first index is equal to new customer. What's this going to do? It's going to call this guy up here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm calling this constructor method up here. That's all. And I'm going to keep this real simple. I'm going to say John Smith. And I'm going to say he's 21. And we're just going to copy this. And then I'm just going to fill these out. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to have this be Sally. And then I'm going to have this be Paul. It's going to be the Smith family. And they're all 21 years old. There you go. And they're all 21 years old. Well, let's change this. Let's make uh, that one 23. So we went and created this nice customer array. And then we're just going to return it. Customers like that. So basically what happened here is I said that I want to create a new customer array called customers. And we called the get customers method, which is right here. And it went and created that array for me and then sent it back. Now, what do we got to do? Well, we have to come in here again to the main method and we have to create what is called a print writer. And a print writer is used to write characters to a file. And that's basically what we're going to do. And it also can use, be used to write other things than characters. But like I said, we're going to focus on character streams right now because that is the most common thing you're going to be writing. Okay, so we're going to go customer output is equal to, and we're going to call another method called create file. And I'm going to specifically say where it needs to go. And if customers.txt doesn't exist, it's going to create it. And if it does exist, it is going to overwrite whatever is there right now. But what do I need to do? I need to create the create file method, and I'm going to do that. So scroll down inside of here come off where we were. And then this guy again is going to be private static print writer because it's going to return a print writer that will allow me to write to a file and then create files the name of the method and string is going to be receiving as you saw above is going to be the location for my new text file that I'm going to create. Now I need to wrap everything inside of a try block 
just to be able to catch any errors that could potentially be thrown. And then the errors that could potentially be thrown would include uh, the IO exception, which you're going to see in a second. And of course, it could be thrown if you try to go and do something with a file that's improper. So we're going to go new file. And then inside of this, we're going to say file name, which the file name was passed. And then we're going to go in here and create our print writer. And I'm going to call it info to write and then you're going to go new print writer like i said before print writers used to write characters to the console to files to anything you've actually used it for a while with the print line and print in previous tutorials over and over and over again then inside of that we need to create a new and i'm actually going to do this on a separate line i'm going to create a new buffered writer and what a buffered writer does is it's going to gather a bunch of characters and write them all at one time without this you would be trying to write everything each time a new character was needed to be generated which is bad so we don't want to do that and then inside of that we need to go new file writer and a file writer is used to write streams of characters to a file that's it that's what it does and then inside of here we're going to go list of names got all those different pieces there and we can close that off and then we can also close off our try block. So basically what we did here was we created this new file that's going to be called list of names and we put it in the location that we have right here. And then here we define that we want to set up the ability to be able to write to said file called list of names. Then what do we need to do? We need to catch potential error, IO exception, like I said, for E. And if this error is thrown, system out print line and I'm going to just send out an error message that says an I O error occurred. And then after that, I want to close the program because something serious like an I O error should basically end the program altogether. And you do that with system exit. And then at the end here, we're going to return null. And there you are. We got that guy all ready to go. Now we have files that we can actually be able to create here. And so we got that all set up. Now, basically what we're doing right now is filling the file with information. And one way we can do that, I'm going to cycle through all the different people that we created in our customer array. And I'm going to one by one go and throw them into the file itself. And I decided to use an enhanced for loop. And to do that, we just need to go customer, which this is what it is. This is a customer object. And then after that, I'm going to have the temporary name be person and customers, which is this guy right here. So we're going to be cycling through this array, spitting out customer objects, and they're going to have a temporary name of person. And then what this is going to do, I'm going to call another method called create customers, and I'm going to send person, which is going to be that individual customer object, and customer output. And customer output is this guy right here. So now we need to go and create, create customers. And what's this guy going to be? Private, Static. In this situation is going to be void, which means it's not going to return anything. Its name is create customers, and it's going to be passed customer object, and I'm going to call it customer, and it's also going to be passed the print writer, which is going to allow it to write to the new file. So what do I need to do? Pretty simple, actually. I'm going to create a string called customer info, and then it's going to go customer first name. It's going to get the value for first name for said customer, and then it's going to go customer last name and get the value for that field as well close that off and then i'm going to go customer info plus is equal to and i'm going to call the integer to string method which is going to turn that integer called customer age into a string and then after we have that all set up we can call customer output which is the name of the print writer the guy that's going to allow me to be able to write to the file and I'm going to call print line. This print line in this situation is going to be used to write the file or write to the file instead of writing to the console like you might be used to. And then customer info is just a string. And this guy all works. And that's pretty much all you need to know if you only want to write to files. But of course, I'm sure that you'd want to read information from files as well. So I'm going to jump in, show you how to do that. First off, what we're probably going to want to do here is close the print writer since we're not going to be writing to the file anymore and there you are that's how simple that is so now we lost the connection to write to the file but that's not a problem we're going to call another method here that i'm going to create in a second called get file info so i'm going to copy this and what this is going to do is read information from the file so let's scroll way back down here again and then we're going to go private static void and get file info as you can tell i'm always copying and pasting these guys so i avoid any type of silly syntax errors and then what are we going to do with this well i think we should put a little bit of a message out on the screen that says what's going to be displayed 
So how about we put info written to file and I'll throw a new line in there on top of the print line so that we have a little bit of a gap. Then I need to open a connection to the file and I'm just going to call it list of names again and I'm going to say new file. And what are we going to put inside here? Well, there's no reason to go and type all that out again. Let's just scroll up here and grab our file that we just wrote to. Scroll back down, jump inside of there, paste that in there, and then put semicolon at the end. Okay, so we just reopened the file and we're going to be reading from it. Well, what do we need to do? We need to create a try block because in this situation, we potentially could throw two different errors. And then we're going to go buffered reader in this situation. And then what buffered reader is going to do is it's going to read as many characters from the file as possible before it would make that information available for use. Again, this speeds everything up. And I'm going to call this get info. And we're going to go new buffered reader. And then what are we going to do? We're going to go new file reader. So remember, file reader is going to read each individual character and try to do something with them. That's why we're using buffered reader. We want to grab all the characters and then use them all at one time. And we're going to go list of names. And that's our file. And then I'm going to create a string called customer info is equal to get info dot read line. And this is going to read individual lines and save them to the string. It's very important to know that read line only reads one line at a time. And whenever we reach the end of the file, the last thing that's going to be sent to the read line method is null. So very, very important to understand. So knowing that, we can create a while loop, customer, info, and we can say keep reading lines until you get to null. So that's good. And if you wanted to just simply print everything out the screen, that's real simple. Just go system out, print line, customer info. And then at the end of that, after it reads that individual line, we want to make a call so that it goes and grabs all the other additional lines until, again, it hits null. And for now, that's all we really need to do with this. I'm going to show you another way of reading information here in a second, but we need to catch any potential problems. So we're going to go catch, and we're going to need to catch file not found exception. And this could be thrown by the file reader. That's why we're specifically calling for it. Are we inside of there? And then in a situation in which we can't read that file, or we can't find it, print line and print couldn't find file. And what do we want to do? System, exit, that would end our program. Well, let's just copy this because we want to catch another potential exception. And that's going to be our IO exception. Leave everything else the same, except we could say an IO error occurred. And then end that if that situation also occurs. So let's run this, see what happens. And there you can see info written to file, and there is all the information that we wanted to print out. There's John Smith 21 and all this other additional information. Now, what if I wanted to actually only pull out individual information though? Well, in that situation, I'm gonna come up to this while loop and we're gonna change some stuff inside of here. So instead of this guy, which is going to just print everything out the screen, we're just gonna comment that out. Then I'm gonna break all of my different lines into pieces, all the different information that's stored in this. So I'm gonna create a new string and I'm going to call it individual customer data, customer info, and I'm going to call split. And what I'm going to split it at, see it has re a regular expression inside of there, but I'm just going to simply come in here and throw a space. So everything's going to be divided up based off of that space. Now, of course, if they were separated by commas, you just put a comma in there. That's how simple that is. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an integer called customer age. And if I want to use the age as an integer, I need to come in here and convert it back into an integer. So we're just going to call integer parse int and then go individual customer data. And the integer is in the index of two. So that's good. All right. So now we got that. And then we can print out system out. This is going to the console print. And we could say customer plus copy this so I don't have to type it out like that. And let's say I just want the first name to show up inside of here. Well, I'm just going to type in zero, and then I'm going to say something like is plus, I'm going to go customer age plus, and then let's say I want to throw a new line inside of there. And that way, I'm able to pull all this information out on an individual basis. I'm going to execute it, and there you are. Customer John is 21, customer Sally is 23, and so forth and so on. So now you know pretty much everything there is to know about reading and writing character streams to files. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.